What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again, and today I'm going to show you guys how to enable Rage Mode on the RX 6800 non-XT with the More Power tool, and then we're going to go ahead and do some tests and see if there's actually any performance gain with Rage Mode turned on on this particular card. Keeping in mind that it's not officially supported by AMD, and if you decide to go ahead and go through these steps and do it on your own card, please do it at your own risk. Without further ado, Let's hop into it. So the first thing you need to do is head on over to Igor's lab and download the more power tool. Now there's a precursor to this that we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, mention here in a second, but you are gonna have to say keep the file because it does think that it is malicious, at least at this point. And that is because it does make changes to your registry. So you'll have to do more info and run anyways. Once again, do this all at your own risk. I take no responsibility if a virus does end up in this download at any point in time in the future. Right now though, it appears to be pretty good. So you're just gonna go through the basic install process. It'll get everything installed for you and then you're good to go. Here it is completed, dun, 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 and now we can launch it. Okay, so here's the caveat. Right now, there is absolutely no way to pull the BIOS for the RX 6800 outside of Linux. Now, I have a live Linux USB drive that I plugged in, booted up, and extracted the BIOS. If you're interested in how to on how to do that, let me know in the comments section below. For this video, we're just gonna be covering more power tool, and if you want to grab the BIOS, you can come on, hit the Discord in the description, and I'll have it uploaded there. So with that aside, what you're gonna do next is select the drop-down menu and select the GPU. As you can see here, these are all grayed out. We don't have any information in it. So we're going to need to go ahead and get it. So we're going to go ahead and click load and that BIOS we mentioned earlier, I'm going to load that BIOS that we've extracted already. And now we have all of our information. Now we did go over how to adjust voltages. You can undervolt this card incredibly well all the way down to like 600 and 13, 612 millivolts, pretty impressive. That's not the point of this video. What you're looking for is going to be under the overdrive limits and the power mode control we are going to tick to one and click right SPPT. At this point we are going to have to reboot the machine, but just so you guys know before we even do that is we're gonna go into Radeon software here we're going to go over to tuning. We're going to go to presets and you notice we have quiet and balanced here currently. Additionally, if you go ahead and under that same performance tab, take a look at the graphics card. You'll see that it's an RX 6800 uh, non XT, right? And excuse that. Apparently we ended up getting a follow on Twitch while we weren't live. Pretty funny there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and reboot the machine. Open our Radeon settings, go to our performance tab, presets, and now you'll see here that we have the rage mode. Yeah, rage mode engage. That's what I'm talking about, boys, right there. So what we're gonna do first is do automatic and default so that we have all of our default settings and we are gonna run some benchmarks. I find that the most beneficial benchmark is, is the 3D Mark software suite. We're gonna do a DirectX 12 benchmark called TimeSpy here, and you can compare and contrast your results as you see fit. We're gonna make sure that the demo is not turned on and minimize that, and we're gonna do a base run. This is with Rage Mode off, so keep that in mind. And then so we can get some more details, we're gonna do Alt-R, and we are going to go to metrics and we're just going to turn the metric overlay on, right? Oop, we did the wrong button there. Okay, so we're going to have to close this and restart it. All right, attempt number two, we now have it up. You can see here GPU utilization, S clock, power, uh, your current temperatures, junction temperature, fans. Uh, you got your VRAM utility, you got your M clock and your CPU utility. So all of that is right there up in the top right hand corner. And let's go ahead and get this benchmark running for real this time. All right. 
Alrighty, so some things to note is our core clock is around 2180 megahertz and our VRAM is clocked, which is memory, is going to be clocked at 1988 megahertz. This is with, once again, rage mode off. We have RAM utilization of 4.8 gigabytes. We have VRAM utilization of 2 gigabytes. Our fan is just on the stock curve. Our temperature is 67C on the core and 82C at the junction. Now I did realize that you guys can't actually see these numbers, so it's good that I read them off to you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of those numbers as we get booted in. We had about 208 watts on the GPU power, uh, which is actually interesting because the wattage limit's to, set to 203 watts, and our GPU utilization uh, during the first GPU test was 99%. Alrighty, so the numbers really haven't changed here. We did get a boost up to almost 2200 megahertz on the core, and our memory clock is staying the same during GPU test two, along with utilization and temperatures. Our temperatures have dropped a little bit, but that's because we had the little bump between, of course, the first test and the second test. Our RAM utilization is exactly the same on both the VRAM and system memory. All right, so this is the CPU test. It should be irrelevant to rage mode in theory. However, we are running the 5600X. Currently, it's stock clocks to make easy comparisons. And with 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Neo clocked at 3600 megahertz with CAS latency 18 applied currently. We are also running in uh, SAM, which is smart access memory that we enabled in the BIOS, and we'll have a how-to for that later as well. Okie dokie, so final score is going to be 13,366 with a graphic score of 14,861 and a CPU score of 8,515. So it does look some of our, like our system info data couldn't be parsed. Um, this is actually due to a little bug. I can get that fixed later on for the official scores. But for now, all we really need to do for comparison is go ahead and check these scores. This may be a case where you want to say yes to Rage. Let's find out. So we're gonna open our Radeon software, go into tuning. We're gonna go to the preset and select Rage mode, okay? Now this might completely tank it. We have no idea. We don't know what it's gonna do, but we're about to find out. All right, so Rage mode is engaged and let's go ahead and start the benchmark. Alrighty, so immediately off the bat, our GPU power is up to about 208 watts, just like it was before. Our core clock has gone up maybe about 10 megahertz to 2190, and our memory clock is staying the same at 1900 and about 90 megahertz. It is fluctuating between 1988 and 1990. So somewhere around there, our, G, our GPU VRAM utilization is 2.1 gigabytes. So we are getting a little bit more utilization out of that. And our system memory has gone up from 4.6, I believe it was, to 4.7 gigabytes. And I will re-verify that, of course, as we go through. Our temperatures have not changed. We're sitting around the high 60 Celsius for our core and around 83 for our junction. Well, this should remain the same probably for our GPU2 score as it did in the first test. So it didn't remain the same. We did have our GPU power spike up to 223 watts and our, we had our core clock jump up to uh, 
surpassing 2.2 gigahertz there for a second, so 2200 megahertz. However, our memory clock is still sitting between 1988 and 1990 megahertz. Our VRAM utilization did go up to 2.2 gigabytes at 2,221 megabytes, and our RAM utilization jumped up in this test from 4.7 gigabytes to 4.9 gigabytes. Okie dokie, so now we get to answer the question. Is turning rage mode on on the RX 6800 non-XT version worth it? Well, right off the bat, we have a 13,315 total score with a graphic score of 14,999 and our CPU score actually dropped here. Now that could be due to multiple reasons, but what we're really looking at here is this graphic score. We do know uh, that we were getting essentially uh, higher clocks, albeit not by that much. So I, I presume if I recall, this isn't gonna be that much, but we're gonna go ahead and add this to compare. Go to my results and add this to compare. And then we are just going to compare the results real quick. And as you can see here, our graphic score did go up by about 1%, so not that much. Uh, we ended up netting maybe uh, a frame per second. So within margin of error, we were pushing the GPU just a little bit further with rage mode, but not so much further that you should go through all the trouble of extracting your BIOS and uh, using more power tool to enable it. I would highly recommend, as opposed to this, going ahead and manually overclocking because what I will show you guys here is that, so we're gonna use the last score that we did here. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we should be able to find our overclocked one. And this is with uh, Sam off. And this is with the Ryzen 5600 overclocked as well, but it is with the 6800. Uh, overclocked to, as you can see here, 2.3 gigahertz, so a 500 megahertz overclock. And with that, we scored significantly better across the board, netting 15,825, which is a 5.5% per, 5 .5 margin over rage mode on, which nets about a 6.5% margin uh, over the non rage mode. So manual overclocking is what you're going to want to be looking at for the RX 6800. If you're interested in my overclock settings for that, let me know in the comment section below. There is still a benefit to the more power tool, I will tell you, with overclocking, as you can actually get yourself about another 50 millivolts uh, with the the voltages and unlock that a little bit higher. Now you can unlock the voltage even higher than that all the way up to like 1150, go as high as you want. 1150 is what the 6800 XT is. However, you're gonna start crashing at about uh, 75 millivolts over, so I wouldn't recommend it. I didn't notice any temperatures in that going up, which is a good, a good note, so feel free to test it out. Let me know what you guys find on your RX 6800s. I know a lot of people don't have them right now. I'm very happy to have them. I got it with a Amazon one-click buy. I don't know how I ended up with it, but I'm gonna try to make all the content so you guys can also have a good purchasing decision in the future. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.